We're at Concrete Builder Supply in Roseburg, Oregon. It's only about a mile from my house. And they have a display of tools here like no one has ever had in this part of, this part of the territory. And besides that, I'm here with my good friend, Dustin Furch. Dustin, good to see you, man. Good to see you, my if, friend. If there's one guy in this part of the United States who knows how to use these tools, it's Dustin. And you've seen him on the channel plenty. And you're gonna see him on the channel plenty more in the future. And so he's put together what he would recommend either to a new hire who's got to start pulling his weight or to a homeowner who's going to start pouring his own concrete. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight tools in a plastic bucket. Dustin, tell us what these are and why they're going to be glad they've got them. Well, what I tell the guys that come to work for me is if you learn nothing but how to catch edges, You'll always have a job. Catch edges means going around the perimeter of the job and cleaning up the interface between the top of the concrete and the form. Fair? Correct. So step one, we'll go homeowner first. Yes. If we're doing a small pad, uh, hot tub pad, AC pad, something like that, a little section of sidewalk. Uh, step number one, once it is rotted or struck, you're going to be using a float. And here, just a good all around hand float, this is a 16 by 3 and an 8. Um, a lot of them are kind of pre-broke in, so they make it simpler. Magnesium. 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 Because uh, they have choices in that. Yeah, there's uh, micartas, there's various different types of fiber floats. And wood. Uh, and wood. Um, they all have their pros and cons, but that's getting much more particular. Yep, nope, this right? is a good so, one for a starter. Good one for a starter. Uh, everyone's going to have a mag float mm -hmm. at, at any stage. So that would be step one. This is the Marshalltown Durasoft handles. This is my preference. Uh, after everything is floated and sealed up, then we're going to be moving on to edgers. Now keep in mind with any of these tools, the smaller the tool, the more awkward it is to try to keep it flat and to keep it true. And flat is a big deal. Flat is a big deal. That's the, Generally, it's your whole purpose. Mm -hmm. um, and so the larger the edger, a, the earlier you can run it, and B, the more accurate it will because typically bigger, be. Because bigger, it tends to float. It, the pressure's not, it'll float across there, and you know when you're flat. Yeah, it's like a snowshoe. It's like a snowshoe. Right? The, yeah. the, the bigger the area, the less likely you're going to be able to move it, because it was already correct with the rod. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, though these are finishes, if done incorrectly, you can screw up everything that you had flat to begin mm -hmm, with. Mm -hmm. So, so an edger of so different edger, radiuses. Yes, and... You know, here's one distinct difference between the homeowner and the new hire is the new hire is going to need to find out what edger are we running mm -hmm. because every one of these radiuses are different, sizes are different. Uh, we run six by six with a half inch radius. Six by six and the curve is a half inch yep. radius. Six by six, half inch radius. So that's our preference. And then, because you have to match every other guy on the job, mm -hmm. you can't have different sizes going everywhere. So it needs to be uniform. Homeowner, doesn't matter, you just need to match yourself. You're the king, man. You're the yeah, king. you're a single pour. Uh, your joiners. These are typically brass. Um, they come in zinc. You can get them in stainless. You can get them in various materials. Um, our preference is brass. And they, the big one, not only do they visually look different because of the different width here and how it's actually shaped to begin with, uh, but also the depth is important because structurally, this needs to cause a crack in what you're doing. And so the further down it goes, the more likely the crack is to form there. Correct, correct. And so you want to be about 20% of the depth mm -hmm. in, in a perfect world. So a very shallow joiner um, would be a very nice decorative strip, but it would have no structural value. Okay. So then we have what I would call uh, a laydown trowel. This is another Marshalltown. This is a five by 20. And in this particular case, the shank, as you can see, is much further away from the end of the guy. trowel. So this is a standard trowel, normal shank length. This would be a pool trowel or a short shank. This is very forgiving for anybody that's either new to the trade or doesn't have a lot of time and experience. So this because is it doesn't, less it likely. Does, it doesn't tend to push that mark out, correct. mark down in the front. A long shank is going to make it flatter. And, and more accurate, okay. a short shank's gonna be way more forgiving. Good, and so, I, re I remember when you taught me that 
the, the extra wide trowel is for when your concrete's not hard. You, have, you can reduce the width of the trowel as the concrete gets harder. I didn't get that. Yeah, so, so the general theory is as the concrete sets up, you want to keep up with it, but you don't want to be too far in front of it and change its shape. So you're, you're just trying to finish as you go. Once it's rotted and it's shaped correctly, you don't want to alter that shape. You just want to fine tune it, finesse it. So in the beginning, the bigger the tool you have, the less likelihood you have of, of putting in ripples or imperfections in the surface. Um, as it sets up, it becomes hard uh, in the curing process. At a certain point, you're going to be pushing really hard, too hard. In at order a, to make any mark. At a certain point, you're not going to be able to do anything with it. So to not fatigue yourself and also keep up with it, I like to progressively step down in my sizes so that I'm applying about the same pressure. Per square inch. Per square inch, uh, clean to the end. Mm -hmm. And then that, you know, for fatigue, for, for long term. Let's uh, say that again. You're increasing the pressure per square inch in order to make any sort of change in the surface. Correct. But you're, but you're not increasing the pressure over large numbers of square inches. Right. When when I'm applying whatever that measurement of weight is, mm -hmm. you know, we'll just say 30 pounds, mm -hmm. right? I'm applying 30 pounds here over how many square inches? Five by 20, call Five it 100. 20, right. So now I'm applying 30 pounds to? Four by 16, 40, 64. And then? Yeah, three by eight, 24. Right. So you're getting more PSI. Correct. But the same burden on your wrist. Correct. Ah. Right. In so. your case, it's more than 30 pounds. Can I say that? <laughs> well, it's like the eight pound sledge, right? Yeah. Well, at a certain point, I needed a six pound. Yeah. Well, now I'm to the point. I need a four. Yeah. Right. That's just where we're at. So young man, if you're starting the job tomorrow, just be aware you're going to get strong, you're going to get tired, and those joints are going to wear out eventually. Yeah. And, and you can keep going. Right? I mean, I can throw my whole body weight on this and keep the PSI up. Sure. But there again, what are we doing to the joint? Yeah. Yeah. Right? And, and how much do you got left in the tank after doing this for yeah. eight hours? Yeah, that's right. So, so here is what is needed for your basic pour. Joiner, if it's large enough. Now, if it's a very small pad, you don't need a joiner, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a, a small guy. But you're going to need these three in any setting. You're going to need an edge, you're going to need a float, you need a trowel. So now that we've covered the basic tools that any homeowner would need for a project, uh, now we have the new hire. What I would require either purchase or have them purchase for anyone that was coming on my crew, or what I would have when I was going on someone else's. Good. Uh, step one would be a margin trowel. You can call it a pocket trowel. It's various things. You can put it in your pocket, hang your tools from it. Um, it's used for scraping concrete off of forms or tools if you didn't get them washed in enough. And it's good because it's small for getting in details around pipes or plumbing or any various tight spots that you don't have room to bring your big lay down trowel in. Cool. So once the margin's there, uh, this is a nice option. This is a pocket hook. You would simply stick it in your back pocket. Doesn't cost much. Doesn't cost much. And you hang your float, that way it's always with you. One less thing you have to carry. You got a scrub brush for cleaning because you've got your bucket to carry your tools. And now you can throw water in it and your scrub brush and you're going to be able to clean as you go. You can keep it near you. you can, if you're doing road work, you can carry it with you as you're going down the road, wherever the case may be. Then we're going to get into the next smaller trowel uh, from your lay down. When the concrete set a little harder and it needs to be finished a little tighter, uh, also for when you're going against wall lines. So the round trowel is really great in the area, not so great up against wall lines. Cool. Then you have your burn trowel, and that's for when you're doing a much tighter finish like a garage slab, mm. uh, and you need to get that extra PSI on your trowel mm. when you're sealing it up. When the burn trowels come out, it's no fun. Okay. The rubber just hit the road and it's time to grab another gear. Well, when it's supposed to come out, yeah. it's not as bad. <laughs> not as bad, but when it's, it's an emergency it's, move. It's when, yeah, exactly. When it's an SOS, no, things are not good. All right, so let me, let me wrap this up. And I hope this has been useful. 
There's no way to, to, I can't even tell you how useful it is to have somebody like this. So I'm not a small dude, right? I, I, I checked this morning, I'm 181 pounds. I'm not asking you. This is a big guy. And, and, it's, and many times it's just like when the pour happens and Dustin's there, it's like having, you know, a gun at a knife fight. It's really great. So if you guys are sweating showing up at work tomorrow, take his advice. If you're sweating, the, batch, the truck's gonna show up and you're not sure you can do it, you're gonna be glad you listened to this video. And in general, concrete is doable. It's hard, it's relentless, but once you've done it, you're gonna feel a lot more confident the next time you have to do something else that's hard. Thanks for watching Essential Craftsman and keep up the good work.